Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. You are all making Gotham great again. That is a Batman reference. No, I'm not a Trump supporter. Um, so since Kamala Harris has announced her, her candidacy to be president, I went on Twitter and called her out because she had this tweet saying, I've gotten $20 billion for foreclosure. Mm, no, she did not. And so many people asked me to tell my foreclosure story. So here's what happened. I bought a home. I was hosting a bunch of game shows. I bought a home in uh, December of 1999 uh, in Valley Glen, which is a little area in the San Fernando Valley. It's like sort of near Van Nuys, nice little middle-class neighborhood. I bought a two bedroom house with a detached garage and a little studio guest house. I bought it for $200,000, a good deal. And by late 2003, uh, it had appreciated up to about $380,000 in value. And in that time between 99 and 2003, uh, I did 300 episodes of television. So then um, I, everyone was saying there's a bubble, there's a bubble. So uh, I looked to move into a neighborhood that probably wouldn't be hurt as much if a bubble were to have burst. This is again, all through the, the, the eyes of 2003. So I moved down to Santa Monica, which is a, for those of you who don't know Los Angeles, it is a nice uh, beach town within Los Angeles County, but it is its own municipality, meaning it has its own uh, mayor, city council, its own police and fire department, even its own public transportation, its own school district, which makes it a more valuable area because some LA uh, public schools aren't that great, some are good, but so it's a desirable area to live and you're right by the Pacific Ocean and you're near the Santa Monica Pier. So I found this condo that was valued, uh, that was for sale around $500,000. It was a three bedroom, two and a half bath and there was a little bit of a bidding war between me and one or two other people and I ended up buying it for $550,000 and I was told it was undervalued. It was worth about between six and six and a quarter um, because the owners had bought it years ago and they were just looking to move out and anything they sold it for was a profit. So, um, so the question somebody said on Twitter something, oh, you, why did you sign a mortgage you couldn't afford? I could afford it at the time when I bought the home in December of 2003. So I took my equity and rolled it into a new place. And I was told by a mortgage, the hold that this, um, there, the, one of the, uh, the mortgage brokers said, yeah. I said, you know, I don't know. That's a, that's a, a bigger amount of money to finance than what I'm used to. And they're like, no, we can low interest. We'll get you a mortgage payment that was not that much more than what I was paying. Cause I told them, I said, look, this is like my cap. I can't go much higher than that. And they got it right there. And I was like, okay, awesome. Um, and uh, I asked my accountant if this is a good idea. He said, yeah, this is how you gain wealth in America is you buy a house, it appreciates in value. You move into a better home and a better neighborhood and you build up equity, boom. Boom. Um, I was hosting TV shows at the time. I was making good money. Not millions of dollars, but a decent six-figure income. It's cable TV, which isn't like, you know, doing NBC or something. It's not like I could retire, but I was making okay money. Um, and I lived there, and there was then a uh, strike in 2007, I believe, and because the writers and actors wanted better wages because there was a new digital in, uh, uh, in, uh, industry emerging. So there was all these new revenue streams and the old contracts with the Actors Guild and the Writers Guild and all that were based on old business models of just traditional television and movies and all this new stuff was, was emerging and sell, digital downloads and all this stuff was starting to emerge in 2007. So there was a strike and what effectively they did is the corporations that run show business, just like they run CNN and Fox and MSNBC, um, you know, they circumvented it because they didn't want to pay union wages. So we've been 
eviscerating unions over the last four or five decades in this country. And show business is no different. So you, so they, they started all the reality TV. Reality TV, for those of you who don't know, is a way for the uh, multinational media conglomerates that are owned and run by billionaires to not have to pay union wages to union actors and union uh, writers and producers. If I just hire some regular person to go, you know, have a survival contest on an island or pick a bachelor or whatever, I don't have to pay them, I don't have to pay them union wages. Like any union, you know, uh, if you do union, like the second game show I hosted was union. So I got health and benefit, health and uh, healthcare benefits. They put money into a pension. And anytime they sell that series with my face and likeness and image, I would get paid. Same thing if you're a writer. Reality TV, they don't have to do that. My point in bringing that up, it made get working hard. So it made my money a little tight. And you know, it was fine. I got a roommate. I was still making my payments. I had an over 700 credit score. It was somewhere in the 720. I had great credit because um, I made my mortgage payment on time. A friend of mine that was a mortgage breaker said, Graham, just don't ever be late. Don't ever be more than 30 days late. If it's more than 30 days late, they have to report it to a credit agency. So if you have a tight month, you gotta pay it on the 15th or the 20th, just pay it before 30 days and you'll be fine. And so I always made my on-time payments. I had great credit. And money got a little tight and hey, my mortgage broker would say, well, you got your house is appreciated in value. It's now worth seven, 800,000 over the years. And, pull a little money out to live on. And I asked my accountant, is this smart? Should I do this? Yeah, you're just, um, it's like you had a big stock portfolio and you needed to liquidate some of it to live on. Okay. I didn't go to finance school. And then some people go, oh, well, you shouldn't have signed those documents. It's, it's your fault. And I love only in America would they shame the average person and defend corporations. We've all been drinking that Kool-Aid. If my auto mechanic if my brakes are squeaking and I say, do I need new brakes? And my mechanic says, no, you're fine. And then I drive and my brakes give out. I guess ultimately I am responsible, but I'm not an auto mechanic. So I didn't study a uh, mortgage law. I look over this contract to the best of my ability and I sign it. And that's what they did. So the recession hit. Um, I was, show business was, it was hard for me to get work in show business. And also a thing as a stand-up comic, many of you may not know this, during the holiday season, stand-up comics, we make a lot of money doing stand-up at office parties. One office Christmas party can pay you what you can make in a week, sometimes even a month. I mean, it can be thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars. And I made money off of that every year that I, for being a stand-up comic, just about every year. So when the recession hit in September of 2008, no companies had any Christmas parties, that was it. So I was having a hard time getting television work and Christmas parties ended. And a lot of bigger name comedians and actors uh, were going back into the comedy clubs because they couldn't get union TV work. See how this happens when they, when they decimate unions, how, it, how there's a ripple effect? So this, oh, you spoiled crybaby, show business person. No, I was like middle class and upper middle class working actor, working comedian. So I started to pay my mortgage later and later in the month. And like I was paying on the 10th and then the 15th and then the 20th and the 25th and the 28th. And I was like borrowing money to try to, and someone was like, um, and I was recently married and my wife was like, why don't we rent this place out and just move into a cheap one bedroom? Absolutely. I started looking into the process of uh, renting the, 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 the condo out. I talked, my loan was with IndyMac Bank. I talked to someone at IndyMac Bank and uh, Bush had just passed, I believe $700 billion in stimulus money. Um, he did that in September of 08, shortly after the crash. And around October, um, the, I talked to someone at IndyMac and they said, look, there's all this new stimulus plan. If you 
fall more than 30 days late on your mortgage, there's all this money. So you might want to wait to make your payment. I was instructed by an IndyMac representative to deliberately wait till after 30 days so that then I would get a stimulus plan in place, some of that stimulus money. I did that. They said, we're going to put you on a forbearance. I didn't know what that was. They're like, so for three months, and they gave me a contract with fine print that says this isn't a legal document. I just noticed that later. <laughs> they said, we're going to cut your mortgage payment in half because my mortgage payment had started to increase because as a result of the strike and having a hard time finding work and then my home appreciating and these mortgage brokers literally calling me up going, we'll give you a line of credit. Okay. My mortgage payment had started to increase. They said, we'll cut your mortgage payment in half and for three months. And in that three month time, we'll restructure your loan using this stimulus money We'll just restructure your loan. I was like, I'm not looking for a handout. I'm not looking for anybody to pay my mortgage. Just can we restructure my loan so that it's a more manageable monthly payment? And they said, yes. And then I, I got a renter in to pay the rent of my original high uh, mortgage payment. So I was like, I'm good. And then, so the rent, I had the forbearance. I was like, okay, good. We'll weather the storm. We'll stay. We, we'll keep owning the house. We'll move, we moved to a cheap one bedroom. We were doing great. At the end of the three months, they said, oh, you don't qualify for the, for, for the loan restructure. Now you owe us three months of half payments. And I couldn't even get a straight answer. I got a notice in the mail saying you owe us 10 grand. I'd go on the website and say 11. I'd call someone on the phone. They'd say, oh, it's 12-5. And I was like, what is going on? Obama gets sworn in January of 2009 and he passes $700 billion. So now we're at $1.4 trillion in taxpayer money that went to the homeowners. No, it went to the banks. It went to the banks. So I call, there's this new Obama save your home plan. I said, great, this is why I voted for Obama. I worked on his campaign in 2008. <clears throat> Dave Dane, who wrote the book Chain of Title, is a friend of mine. He recruited me and others to work on Obama's campaign. So when Dave Dane is critical of Obama's policies, you know it's coming from an honest place, a guy that was a like staunch Democrat, not some like right winger that thinks Obama's a terrorist or whatever. Um, same thing. Oh, new play, payment plan. We're going to cut your payment almost in half. Three month forbearance at the end of the three months we'll restructure your loan. I said, okay, good. They did it again. At the end of the three months, oh, you haven't been making full payments. What? You told me to do this. So now, six months of half payments I've been making according to them. They did it to me one more time. And then I called a lawyer who said, here's what you should do. Stop making payments. When you get near foreclosure, they don't want people to lose their home. They, 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 they're going to, then you can negotiate about restructuring a loan. They want to keep people in their homes. I said, are you sure? Yep. A lawyer told me this that was referred to me by another friend of mine who was a lawyer. So I stopped making payments. And then I filed for bankruptcy at the end of it to stave off uh, the foreclosure hearing. I went to the foreclosure hearing and the judge, who I found out later, many of them were paid off by the banking industry, said no. And I even said, can we prove the title? Because that was a lot of things, was all this robo signing and everything. They, the, the mortgage companies didn't even have a physical title. It's like a deed. They didn't own the physical paper deed. 
and some people, the judges were going, well, if you don't own the deed, you don't have the piece of paper that says you're the owner, then this person gets it. That did not happen to me. I find out, so then in March of 2010, I lost my home. That was supposed to be my retirement. It was my dream home. I live in a precarious business. That's why when I was making decent money hosting the game shows, I didn't go buy a bunch of cars and Rolexes. I put it into my home. I can always rent it, whatever. So I'm, I, I foreclosed on it. And then I found out later that One West Bank bought all these mortgages from IndyMac Bank at 30 to 40% of its value and deliberately kicked people out and forced them into foreclosure in neighborhoods that were favorable, like mine. Because I had a friend of mine who, who fell on hard times because of the recession and they did restructure his loan because he lived in a neighborhood that was overvalued. Because they bought my mortgage, which at the time was about probably $650,000. They paid 30 to 40% of its value. And they went, well, if we kick this guy out and resell it even in the middle of a recession for 700 grand, sell the place for 650, 700 grand, we'll make a profit. And that's what they did. And they kicked me out. So when I say Bush, Obama, and Kamala Harris kicked me out of my home, stole my home, that's what I mean. Insult to injury, in 2012, I got a notice in the mail independent foreclosure review. This was set up by Obama. We're going to review all these and, you know, this criminal banking. We're going to hold them accountable. And I didn't want to do this, but I, I was like, okay. And I called them up and they said, send us all your documents. We, if we find any, any crimes, any fraud, we can't guarantee some people have gotten money. In some cases, people have even gotten homes. And I was like, what? Not gonna get my hopes up. Don't trust this system. They said we should have a decision in about six months. At the five, six month mark, I call them. They're like, we've been inundated. Like hundreds of thousands of people sent this in. Hundreds of thousands of people in the state of California alone. They said, just give us another six months. They said another six months to me for two and a half years. So that was like summer of 2012. So by 2015, I get a notice in the mail saying, oh, you didn't qualify. So then they strung me along again to give me hope that I was gonna get something. I thought I was gonna get something. Am I gonna get a brand new free house? I doubt it, but maybe I'll get something. Maybe I'll get five, 10 grand. I don't know, 20, something, nothing. And One West Bank did this. Steve Mnuchin. And other Goldman bankers essentially bought up and profited. This is from The Intercept, by the way. Or no, this is from Business Insider. Bought up and profited from assets brought at a steep discount following a financial crisis in which their bank was a key player. Under, under their watch, the bank foreclosed on 36,000 home loans, according to the California Reinvestment Coalition. That's 36,000 in the state of California. According to the California, uh, this happened while One West was getting taxpayer bailouts in the form of payments from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation to the tune of $1 billion. Business Insider, not exactly a hippie socialist publication. One West Financial Freedom Unit, which issued reverse mortgages aimed primarily at elderly homeowners looking for a source of income. So when you go online and you shame people that lost their homes, they were preyed upon. They were preyed upon. Three times they told me they were going to restructure my loan with taxpayer money. They took your taxpayer money and my taxpayer money and they told millions of Americans, we're here to help. They didn't. They, prop they created the crisis and then they profited off of kicking even more people out of their homes. They got paid to kick me out of my house. You wonder why I'm mad? You wonder why I'll never vote for Kamala Harris? That's why. Doesn't make me racist. If Nina Turner was running for president, I would vote for her today. Do you know who Nina Turner is? Former senator from Ohio. 
that worked on Bernie Sanders' campaign who was not allowed to speak at the 2016 Democratic National Convention. Let me say that again. A black woman was told she can't speak at the Democratic Convention. Where was your outrage, Kamala supporters that are calling me racist? Where was, did you have outrage then? Hillary supporters, we can't, we're tired of the patriarchy silencing women. Was, were you outraged then? Was Joanne Reed outraged then? Huh? Was Donna Brazile out? Oh wait, Donna Brazile was busy getting fired from CNN because she cheated in a debate by giving Hillary answers ahead of a question. Oh, right. They foreclosed on 16,000 loans of senior citizens in 2009, according to other data obtained by the California Reinvestment Coalition. Here are all the Democrats that Mnuchin has donated to. Now, he donated extensively to the Republican Party. Trump, everything. This is why he's now Secretary of Treasury. He's our Secretary of Treasury. 16,000 elderly, 36,000 people. So that's 50-some thousand people just in the state of California that he helped kick out of their homes and ruin their lives. My condo today would be in the neighborhood of probably 1.4 to 1.5 million dollars. 1.3 on the low end. He donated to Charles Schumer. Chuck Schumer, by the way, has taken more money from Goldman Sachs than any politician in either party. Chuck Schumer takes more money from Goldman Sachs. Now, when I say that, does that mean I'm anti-Semitic? Oh, wait, I voted for Bernie and Jill Stein. Oh, that must mean I'm a Kremlin puppet. There you go. I just, it's hard to follow the ridiculous line of logic of the uh, neoliberal identity politics. Oh, look at it. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, John Edwards, John Kerry. He's been stacking up people on both sides. That's the thing. When you think the Democratic Party is better, they take money too. None of these people are that great. None of the Republicans are great. They take money. The memo obtained by The Intercept, this is an article in The Intercept that was written by Dave Dane. One West rushed delinquent homeowners out of their homes by violating notice and waiting period statutes, illegally backdated key documents that the independent foreclosure review somehow couldn't find. So even that was just, a th that was just more uh, talk. That's how the Democrat, independent foreclosure review, we're going to get to the bottom of this token gesture, maybe help a handful of people They put them on the news. Meanwhile, everybody else gets screwed over like I did. They game foreclosure auctions. In the memo, the leaders of the state attorney general's consumer law section said they had uncovered evidence suggested of widespread misconduct. In a year-long investigation, in a detailed 22-page request, they identified over a thousand legal violations in the small subsection of One West loans that were able to examine. And they recommended that attorney general Kamala Harris file a civil enforcement action against the Pas Pasadena-based bank. They even wrote up a sample legal complaint seeking injunctive relief and millions of dollars in penalties. Fuck you, is what she said to me and tens of thousands of Californians and in effect, millions of Americans. And you want, you want her to be president. And if I don't vote for her, I'm racist and sexist. Got it. So if you didn't vote for Jill Stein, you must hate female doctors. You don't want women to be a doctor. Does that make sense? If I make that ridiculous claim? The consistent violations of California foreclosure process outlined in the memo would indicate that Mnuchin's bank didn't merely act callously, but did so with blatant disregard for the law. Kamala Harris, Barack Obama, Steve Mnuchin, you owe me $1.5 million in beach res uh, real estate or I'll take cash. Some piece of property near the beach worth a million five I'd be able to walk there with my surfboard under my arm or I'll take a million five cash, tax-free. You're awful people. You're horrible people. A powerful investigation of foreclosure abuse by One West Bank, which 
was owned at the time by Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, was abandoned after One West donated to the political campaigns of then California Attorney General Jerry Brown, Democrat, resist Trump, and then incoming Attorney General Kamala Harris. So when people say, oh, and he donated $2,000 to her 2016 campaign, and people go, oh, it's only two grand, and then she didn't vote to confirm him. That is more token nonsense. That is more C, resist. She knew he was gonna get confirmed. Two grand is not a lot of money, but she gave money to Jerry Brown and Kamala Harris to ensure that this happened. He knew this was going to happen and he bought his way out of it. The Democrats are not your friends, neither are the Republicans. So I'm tired of this. I'm tired of when, I've, when I bring this up, saying Obama was a terrorist, that's racist. Saying Obama helped create 5.2 million foreclosures, you want to know? This all happened under Obama, right? He didn't just, yes, he did inherit Bush's problems, but then did nothing to fix them. He let this get worse because Steve Mnuchin paid everybody off. And now he's the Secretary of Treasury. You want to blame Jill Stein voters? No, 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 no. Blame the Democratic Party because this is who they're in bed with. The Republican Party is too. The reason I didn't vote for Donald Trump was he had money from big oil. There's a million reasons not to vote for him, but mainly money from big oil and support from white nationalists. And what happened when he became president? Steve Bannon goes in his cabinet and former uh, ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson becomes the Secretary of State. Trump's entire cabinet is full of climate change deniers. He's fired everybody. I can't keep track of who's who, but I guarantee you they're all still climate change deniers because big oil pays them. So when the banking lobby pays somebody and they want to run for president and then they helped get my house stolen, no way am I going to vote for them. No way. You want to call me racist and sexist? That just means you are in denial about the facts of how corrupt both parties are. There's not two parties in America. There's two classes. There's the ruling class, and then there's all of us. Capitalism creates racism. Read up about Fred Hampton. You think you're so enlightened, you liberals? Read up about Fred Hampton. You right-wingers and think you know so much about America? Read up about Fred Hampton, right? Read up about Eugene Debs. Read up about these people. Because if anyone on the right and anyone on the left actually pulled their head out of the corporate media's goddamn ass and read, you would understand that we're all getting screwed. They want us divided. They want people going on Twitter calling me racist and sexist because I'm calling out someone that's a puppet to the ruling class and the billionaires. They want that. They want that. They want you saying anyone that voted for Bernie Sanders is a sexist, racist burn bro, despite the fact that Bernie Sanders, his polling, better with blacks and Latinos than he has with white men. Why? Bernie's bad for Wall Street. Kamala Harris is good for Wall Street. Kristen Gillibrand, good for Wall Street. Nina Turner wasn't allowed to speak because she stumped for Bernie Sanders. Socialism is bad for Wall Street. Letting billionaires get away with everything is what they want to keep going. So they're going to keep buying off politicians. Don't fall for it. Thanks for watching the show. And support me on patreon.com because guess what? I don't get to be on TV. When you say crap like this, you don't get hired to be on TV. I'm not going to be on a wacky sitcom. I'm not going to get a comedy special where I just talk about, oh, my beard and I'm overweight. and <laughs> This, what I'm talking about, terrifies them. Support independent media. Stop watching the corporate media because they're lying to you. You think MSNBC is telling you the truth? Watch an hour of their programming and write down who buys all the ads. Do that for me. Do that for me. Do that for yourself. And then get back and tell me if I'm racist and sexist or not because I don't want oligarchs buying politicians and nosediving America even more so because we're not a representative democracy. We're a kleptocracy run by oligarchs. Thanks for watching.